underrated. That's what the LG G series of phones has always been to me. And that hasn't changed this year either. I just don't feel quite as strongly as I used to. Probably because I'm getting older. I eat a lot of junk food. I don't drink as much water as I probably should. Uh, I'm just joking. What I mean is it's not as good as it used to be. Uh, I do think the G7 is the best looking phone LG's made so far, even if that means it looks super similar to other phones on the market right now. Although I did find it considerably more slippery in the hand around the edges than the majority of phones I've reviewed. It's as slippery as a pig in a farmer's bedroom. It's as slippery as a toilet after a full breakfast at McDonald's. It's as slippery as a... I could do this all day. So, no more buttons on the back, which is fine with me, because after all, it's not what's on the back, it's what's on the front that matters. Know what I mean? Everything's on the sides now, like most phones, but this year they stuck a dedicated Google Assistant, sorry, AI button under the volume buttons, which, I mean, I like having shortcut buttons, but just like the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S9, they don't let us remap them to whatever we want. That's like giving someone a radio and being like, you can only listen to one station, just one. It makes no sense to me. Anyways, aside from Google Assistant, if you double press it, it'll launch Google Lens, which I'll admit is cool, even though I never use it. And then apparently pressing and holding, otherwise known as long pressing, lets you quickly talk to Assistant. Uh, I don't know how that's any different than just pressing the Assistant button once and then just talking. So like seriously, drop me a comment down below if you know what the difference is. There's a headphones port, which the fact that it's even there at all is pretty sweet all on its own. But, and this is where LG's G phones start getting under rated, it's got a badass 32-bit hi-fi quad DAC as well as DTS X3D sound when using any wired headphones. Or just connect a Bluetooth speaker with an aux cable for an even louder, richer audio experience. Now, it does only have a mono speaker, but it's pretty neat with what LG's done with it. Um, I know neat and mono speaker should never be in the same sentence, but hear me out. LG is calling it the boombox speaker. Again, I know, just, just hear me out. So the speaker itself gets plenty loud, but what makes it special is the resonance chamber LG's built into the G7. Uh, it's supposed to help produce richer lows, which I'll admit it does to a degree. Like it's a much better sounding mono speaker than pretty much any other phone out right now. But it's that resonance chamber that brings it home while laying flat on a tabletop by resonating the sound through the surface. Really cool. The fingerprint reader might be one of the best I've used so far, not just because it's accurate. Most modern phones these days have high accuracy fingerprint readers. It's the ability to read your finger when you've got dirty or oily fingers which I have all the time. <laughs> now look, I don't know what the hell you're sticking your fingers in, but if it'll unlock the phone after sticking my fingers in the type of shit I do, I'm pretty confident you guys won't have any issues. Well, except for the unlock animation, it's really slow, like Paris Hilton slow. <laughs> She's so dumb. Anyways, the display on this guy is an interesting one. First, it's an IPS LCD panel. Not my favorite type, but as far as that technology goes, LG's displays are pretty damn good. Uh, there's a healthy amount of saturation from an LCD display in a world of highly saturated AMOLED displays. And of course, because of the resolution, lines are sharp, and the display settings has a really good amount of image customization options too. Second, outdoor visibility is gonna be a total non-issue with up to 1,000 nits of brightness thanks to the new RGBW subpixel arrangement, which thanks to the dedicated white subpixels lets you enable brightness boost by tapping the little icon to the left of the brightness slider. Just be careful not to hit the brightness boost button while you're in bed, you don't want to nuke your eyes. The notch hasn't really been an issue for me on any of the recent phones, but if you don't like it, too goddamn bad. No, I'm just joking. There's an option under second screen that'll let you fill up the left and right side of the notch and even pick some gradients to add some pizzazz. The software experience isn't bad. I'm not a fan of the colors and design choices, but it comes with Android 8.0. Uh, there's some nifty context aware features, uh, the floating bar that I'll never be caught dead using, as well as some storage and performance optimization tools. So yeah. But here's the thing about performance. You can tap that optimize button as much as you want, but compared to other phones in the same class, dude, it's noticeably slower in virtually every single way. Now, keep in mind, I've been reviewing the model with only four gigs of RAM, so I have no idea if the six gig model makes a difference or not, 
I imagine it would, but don't quote me on that. The camera combo on LG G phones is hands down my favorite combination on any phone ever with a standard angle view 16 megapixel camera and another 16 megapixel camera with an awesome 107 degree field of view wide angle lens. But unfortunately, image quality can be kind of hit or miss. Like skin tones look good. There's good detail, decent dynamic range and does a pretty good job at colors except for red and orange, which seems to get as oversaturated as Donald Trump's face and hair. And highlights get blown out pretty easily compared to something like the Galaxy S9, which only slightly overexposes, but doesn't necessarily blow out highlights. Um, low light photos are pretty piss poor too. Uh, LG's stuck in this new super bright mode for when it detects a low light scene, and it's amazing how well it works at making your photos look terrible. So if you do get this phone, just make sure you turn that off in settings right away. Portrait mode on the rear facing cameras does a pretty good job 90% of the time, but portrait mode on the front facing camera kind of sucks. And I don't like how they have a bokeh slider, which I think will really confuse people. But if you do decide to use it, keep it at about three or four if you want to avoid looking like a distorted mutant. But regardless of all that, I thought I did a really good job with recording 4K video and that OIS did a really good job at fighting my crackhead level shaky hands. Bottom line, decent enough photo quality, certainly much better than any other mid-range phone, but for a flagship device, as much as I hate saying this because I love LG phones, I'm a little disappointed this year. Battery life, yeah, for me, it's been another disappointment. Um, I tested with both the always on display enabled and with it disabled, and in both instances, I can't make it through a full day. Uh, with the always on display enabled with average usage, I'd be at 10% by around 5 p.m. And with it disabled, I'd make it to around six or seven before needing to charge again. I don't know what the deal is. Um, I use the same settings and same apps across all the phones I review, so I have no clue what's going on. Here. So in summary, the G7 is another great phone from LG, but not as great as other G series phones before it. Uh, if you're big into listening to your music with the best possible audio quality available on a phone, I'd recommend the G7 all day. But if getting through a full day on battery, taking consistently good photos and a smooth user experience are important things to you as they are to me, I'd have to suggest skipping the G7 and looking at something like the OnePlus 6, Galaxy S9, or even the iPhone 10 or even eight. <laughs> Anyways, that about does it for this one. But based on my findings, what are your thoughts? Like did LG shit the bed this year or am I just overly judgmental? Drop me a comment and let me know. But as always, if you liked the video, show me some love with that like button. And if you're new to my stuff, don't forget to hit that notification bell and subscribe for new videos every week. Thanks as always for watching and I'll talk to you on the next one. Cheers.